Proudly we hail. City where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story. As proudly we hail the Air Training Command. Dan O'Malley is an airman second class, but they call him Sir. And the way he stands up tall is only one of the many other things that make him a different kind of two-striper. O'Malley is a tactical instructor, or T.I., and is the most important man in the world to a lot of young Americans. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment, and we'll find out more about Dan O'Malley. High potential. What do those two words mean to you? To a young man concerned with his future... Well, they can mean success in his chosen field because the young man with the high potential in today's specialized world is the one with specialized training. Now, you can get that training as an airman in the United States Air Force. Today, Air Force schools all over America are graduating skilled specialists in literally hundreds of jobs. Previously unskilled men are now highly qualified X-ray technicians, aircraft repairmen, and intelligence specialists. And these are only a few of the wonderful assignments open to ambitious young men. There's a job to suit every aptitude and interest. So if you're of military age, well, now is the time for you to decide on your future. And your Air Force offers some of the finest specialized training to be found anywhere. Yes, the young man with a high potential for success is the one with the good training. So start building your future today by becoming an airman in the United States Air Force. The friendly people at your local Air Force recruiting station... We'll be only too glad to talk it over with you and give you complete information, so see them soon. And now we present the first act of the proudly we hailed production, The Eleventh Flight. This is it for the next three months. Yeah, I wonder where we go now. All right, let's fall in here. I guess from now on they'll tell us. Come on, step it up there. Bus is waiting. You're to eat before you report in. Man, they sure don't waste any time. It's a big responsibility being a TI, a tactical instructor. When they enter basic, most Jeeps are confused and upset. And they all have one thing in common. They want to know how. And I'm the one who tells them. There are tall ones and short ones and fat ones and thin ones. And I tell them the Air Force will find each one of them a place. And I tell them the truth. Now, this is my tenth flight. It's only the first day of the second week, and we have all got a long way to go. Gee, I can't get used to it yet. I guess it takes time, Pete. What do they call us Jeeps? I don't know. You know, I'll bet we've had 18 million tests. How long do you suppose before they stop testing us? We've only got 11 weeks training. I don't know. The worst of it is you can't figure how you did. Yeah, and how you do is what decides the way you get training, whether it's going to be technical school or on the job. Or helper. Yeah, we should all make school all right. But it's what school that worries yeah. me. Oh, oh boy. boy. Sure feels <laughs> good to sit. I sure never knew I'd do this much walking in the Air Force. You know, I can't see how they get everyone assigned to the right jobs, like us, for instance. Well, what about us? Well, suppose we all choose the same career field. Yeah? Yeah, you couldn't find three guys more different. Except for what I learned in high school, I don't know anything but farming. Well, they'll farm you out. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's awful. Yeah, but I wasn't really trying. <laughs> <laughs> Three Jeeps, as we call them. Jack West comes from Frisco, only child. Pete Hanson, big rangy farm boy, calls Selena's home. And Jerry Alvarez, his family runs a grocery store in El Centro. And as career counselor, 
I will try to explain some of the advantages of the 43 different careers that are open. And it will then be up to you to decide which one will give you the most satisfaction. With your choice as a guide and your scores on the aptitude test, which you have now completed in your first week in the Air Force, your assignments will be made. Today I'm going to talk to you about jet maintenance. You may think there is no glamour in wielding a screwdriver or a ball-peen hammer, but the men who do these jobs, the ground crews and the crew chiefs, they are the backbone of the Air Force. If you choose and are assigned to jet engine mechanic training, you will receive it at Amarillo Air Force Base. Instruction there includes operating principles, design features, major components and systems, field maintenance, and minor repairs of aircraft. <laughs> Well, anyone made up their mind yet? I don't know. I thought first I'd try to get into the photography school, but gee, all that stuff about the job those jet mechanics do, I don't know. Boy, my mind's made up. Well, yeah, and what? Well, just what Pete said. Jet mechanic training. Boy, they're the backbone of the Air Force. Why, without them, there wouldn't be any hey, Air Force. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I seem to have heard that a little different. I seem to remember that it finished up that regardless of what field you chose you'd know that they all contribute equally to the strength of the Air Force and to the country. Yeah, I don't know, maybe, but... Well, maybe uh, not you, but I've been thinking, and if my tests come out right, I'm going to try to get into accounting training. Oh, Jack, what for? You sit at a desk all day, and, and you ruin your eyes adding up a bunch of dull figures. Now, a jet mechanic... Well, there are as many different ideas and who's most important as there are categories to choose from. I guess it's a good thing that Jeeps don't have to make a choice until the seventh week, because by then, some of them have changed their minds at least eight times. Meanwhile, they're learning. It's a long, slow process. The hours of close-ordered drill when a bunch of disorganized walkers slowly but surely become long, straight lines. Each Jeep in step, eyes fixed ahead, each Jeep becoming a part of a unit. And even in basic academic schooling, because the Air Force feels that an informed Jeep is a more satisfied Jeep and will eventually be a more efficient airman. There are classes in citizenship, leadership, first aid, and psychological warfare. But at the moment, it's 1,500 hours, and it's mail call. Hey! My sister's gonna have a baby, isn't that something? <laughs> and my aunt's moving into a new house next week. Oh, I sure wish I could be there for that. What a party they'll have! <laughs> Hey, yeah, what's the matter with you, Pete? Nothing. Oh, don't tell me nothing. You don't look like nothing's the matter. Nothing, I tell you. Look, you got a letter that's bothering you or something? No, no, that's it. I didn't. Well, then that means everything's all right, doesn't it? Sure, sure. Well, then what's the matter? You don't know. They wouldn't write me if there was something wrong. You don't know how they are. Oh, so because they don't write, right away you start imagining something's wrong, huh? Well, I don't know. I just don't know. Well, look at it the other way, Pete. They're busy. You told me yourself that this is harvest time and it's the busiest time of the year. So they just haven't had time to write. Well, maybe my dad's back's gone bad again. Gee, two years ago he was laid up for a month. If that had happened now with me, gone. Uh, gee, I, I don't know, Pete. I, I think you're just looking for trouble. Or Mom, maybe she's sick. She'd write no matter how busy she is. Sure, but if she I'm does... I'm just going crazy not knowing. Hey, hey, Pete, here comes Jack. I know just how to get his goat. Hey, Jack! Jack, your mom's still worried about those bad companions you're running around with? If she is, she didn't mention it. She didn't? Hey, what's the matter? You told me that she always mentioned us bums. Uh, I'm very disappointed, aren't you, Pete? I'll lay off him, Jerry. Yeah. I don't suppose she's learned to love us, has she? Come on, let's see the letter, Jack. Come on. Come lay on. off. Ah, come on. You always read them to us before. How about it? Come on, I let's I told you to it. lay off. Come on, hey. hey. What's the matter with you? I was only kidding. Look, kid someone yeah. else, and I'm tired of it. Hey, what's the idea? Well, Break it up. Come on now. Break it up. All right, now, what's the trouble here? No trouble, we were only kidding, sir. Didn't look like kidding to me. It's okay, sir. I, I guess I just got excited. All right. Get a move on. You've got a class. You're late for it. Right now. Hanson's worries about what was happening at home, well, maybe they don't sound like a big problem, and maybe they weren't. But it's that old one about the bad apple. There's nothing like one guy to infect the morale of the whole flight. And West, he had a tough one to hold, too. You can take a ribbing just so long. In every flight, there are all kinds, and almost all of them have problems. 
It's up to me, though, to see that their problems don't get them down. A T.I. gets to know things, and one of the things he gets to know fast, at least if he's a good one, is when there's trouble coming up. And this was trouble. And more was brewing the next day, which was Saturday. I got a message that young West had a visitor. Oh, hi, Mother. Gee, it's nice to see oh, you. Jackie, dear, let me look at you. Oh, that dreadful haircut. And you're so thin. Oh, actually, Mother, I put on five pounds. Well, you don't look it. Well, I have. The food's great. Oh. It's just I guess I'm in good shape. That's all. Just look thinner. Gee, Mother, you know I really like it. It's a wonderful experience. I don't see how you could. These friends of yours, they don't sound like the oh, kind of boys. They're okay, Mother. <laughs> Well, now, even though you say you like the awful food, I'll bet you'll be glad to get a decent meal. Look, dear, we'll go into town. I suppose there must be some kind of restaurant that serves food that's fit to eat. Well, I wouldn't know. I've never been off the base. Why not? I've sent you money. You can't have spent it all here on the, the fort. The base, Mother. Oh. A matter of fact, I haven't spent any of it. I get a salary, you know. It's more than enough. I just put what you sent in the bank. I knew there was no point in returning it. You wouldn't understand. Yes, but if you have money, why haven't you been having a good time? I have been having a good time. In a different sort of way, I guess. Actually, we can't leave the base until our basic's half over, and that'll be in about ten days. Then we get one pass until basic's completed. Oh, you poor thing. Cooped up here with nothing to do. We've got plenty to do, Mother. We're not too tired afterwards. There's movies, a service club, snack bar... Sometimes we just sit around the barracks. One of the guys has a record oh, player. Well, this is going to stop right now. Come along with me, dear. We're going to town. Mother, I just finished telling you. It'll be ten days before I can go to town. Nonsense. Even the Air Force can't tell me I can't take my boy out to dinner. Uh, I'm afraid it can, Mother. Ridiculous. I want to speak to someone in authority. Oh, Mother. I said I want to speak to someone in authority, and I mean just that. Now, where is he? <sighs> Mother, I guess you better talk to O'Malley, then. He's the T.I., T.I.? What's that? Uh, tactical instructor. He's an authority here. Come on, let's go. You are listening to the proudly we held production of The Eleventh Flight, and we will return for our second act curtain in just one moment. Air power is peace power. And today, the United States Air Force is seeking alert and ambitious young men to become airmen and help safeguard the peace of our country. While serving their country, today's airmen are attending the world's finest specialized schools. There, they're learning such interesting and rewarding skills as photo mapping, guided missiles, aircraft, electronics, and, well, gee, many, many others. And upon graduation, they're highly skilled specialists, ready for interesting and good-paying assignments in the United States and in many fascinating countries around the world. So if you're a young man of service age, well, then you owe it to yourself to investigate the amazing career opportunities open to you as an airman. And in addition to an outstanding career, well, you'll enjoy educational and travel benefits that are second to none. You'll wear the smartly styled blue Air Force uniform. And you'll enjoy the respect and prestige that goes with being a member of the world's finest Air Force. Visit your local Air Force recruiting station and talk it over with the friendly people there. They'll tell you how you can qualify as an airman in the United States Air Force. And now the second act curtain of the proudly we hailed production, The Eleventh Flight. So you see, Mr. O'Malley, I'll just take Jackie along. We'll have a bite of dinner. I've always done it in the past, on a Saturday afternoon when he was at boarding school. Isn't that right, Jackie? Uh, yes, Mother. And I've never gotten him back late. Only that one time when well, I found... Well, uh, you see, Mrs. West... At that uh... time, I found him wearing those shoes with the run-down heels, and I just had to take him to the city to get him some new ones. You remember, Jackie? Yes, Mother. But I can see that his shoes are all right. A little heavy, perhaps. Not what I'd choose for him, but... Well, anyway, I'm, I'm so glad you understand. Really, you're quite charming, and I've enjoyed so much talking with you. Oh... Uh... Ma'am. Yes, Mr. O'Malley. Well, I certainly do understand. But I, I'm afraid that maybe you don't exactly understand. Oh? <laughs> Whatever do you mean? Well, ma'am, I'll try to explain. See, first of all, ma'am, your son is being prepared now for an education that would cost many thousands of dollars. And one of the most important things he needs to feel, you know, in order to get the best out of it, is integration with a group. 
And, and group discipline is one of the things that'll make him feel this. And so he gets up very early in the morning, ma'am. Earlier than he ever has before because he's got a long day ahead of him. And therefore, he, he must. In fact, he wants to go to bed at an early hour. Now, you wouldn't want his health to suffer, uh, would you? Oh, well, Another no, thing, I... ma'am. Your boy is just one of 70 in the group. Of course, he is very outstanding, you understand. Oh, but... I know. I'm so glad you realized that, too. Yes, ma'am. You see, not one of those 70 men is going to leave this base until the week after next. Now, if we let your son go out with you today, why, tomorrow we'd have 69 requests for the same thing. Now, you can see what a problem that would create. Oh, well, I, I never thought of that. No, I'm sure. Now, the third thing that we have to think about is the men's attitude towards your son's receiving uh, special privileges. You mean they'd resent... Jack? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid they would, ma'am. Oh, well, I wouldn't want that to happen. My boy has always been a, a leader in his class. I'm sure he has. I guess you can see what he'd be up against. Uh, yes, I... I guess so. It would certainly jeopardize his position. Now, West, why don't you take your mother over to the snack bar? Show her around the base a little. You're off duty now. Yes, sir. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how... Oh, to... That's all right, kid. Take it easy. Go on. Get going. Well, seems like you just get one straightened out and then there's another. And in the meantime, there's a bivouac where the jeeps learn how to live under combat conditions. And there's, there's the long, lonely hours on sentry duty. They don't forget those. And always the problems, big or small, real or imagined. And if you don't take care of them when they're small, they usually get bigger. Hey, Hanson. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hold it a minute, will you? I'd like to talk to you. Yes, sir. You, uh, going someplace? I'm just walking around. I'm off duty. Oh, yeah, I know. That's not what I mean. I'm on my way to the captain's office. Care to walk along with me? Hmm? Yes, sir. Heard from your family yet? No, sir. Hey, how'd you... I mean, have those guys been telling you a lot of stuff? Oh, no, no. No one said a thing. I'm sorry. I just thought... I guess you might be a little steamed up. You're kind of worried about whether everything's all right at home, eh? No, sir. Well, I, I guess I would be. You haven't been away from home much, have you? No, sir. First time. You know, Hanson, there's lots of reasons for people not writing. Most of them don't always spell trouble. Yeah, I know that. Just thought I'd mention it. Yes, sir. You ever think about um, seeing the padre about it? The chap? Yeah, sure. You go to church. I've seen you there. You know, he's not just here for that hour Sunday morning. He can do you a lot of good. Gee, I, I, I wouldn't bother him about a thing like that. Why not? He's a pretty good guy. I guess he thinks it's his job to be bothered about things like that. Well, not by me. Well, think it over. I'd go see him. He'll straighten you out, like I say, and find out if there's something wrong to boot. I'll think it over. You do that. Well, here we are. Now, if you decide, his office is uh, right around the corner and down the hall. Okay, sir. Higgins, one of my Jeeps been in here today, uh, Hanson? Nope, I haven't seen him. Uh, is a Padre in his office? Sure is. Go right in. Thanks. And then, finally, there's the day that they get their assignments. That's usually a bad one for me. There's always one Jeep who doesn't think he can live because they didn't give him the thing he asked for. It's my job to sell him that what he gets is not only just better for the Air Force, but better for himself. In the long run. Hey, hey, Pete. Pete, yeah, Jack. What'd you get? Just what I asked for, jet mechanic. Oh, that's swell. I guess old Jerry really sold you on it, huh? Yeah, he sure did. How about you? How'd you do? Me for Lowry. Getting that cost and analysis technician training I wanted. Uh, where is Jerry? Anyhow? I haven't seen him. Oh, there he is. Over there. Hey, Jerry. Hi, hi, Jerry. What'd you get? Gee, but I can't understand it. What do you mean, no jet school? That's right. 
Doggone it, you'd think when a guy is as sold on something as I was that, that they'd want to have him. Yeah, I guess so, Jerry, but well, what did you get? Oh, some kind of weather forecasters course. Oh. Gee whiz, what do I know about weather? Well, what did you guys get? I got the accounting course. Jet school. Jet school? Yeah. Oh, that does it. And I was the guy that sold you on it. That's rough, I know. Yeah, it sure is. Well, look, uh, come on with us. We'll go over to the snack bar and celebrate with a double chocolate malted. No. Yeah. Thanks just the same, fellas. I got something to do. I'll see you later. Guess he's pretty disappointed. Yeah, I guess so. Well, come on. I don't think I'll go either. Are you still worried about your folks? I'm just not hungry. Well, come on. You can watch me. Well, okay. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. No, no, I guess I don't mean that if you're really serious. But first, before you get all steamed up, let's let's talk it over. Jerry, just what exactly is the trouble? Well, I just want to work on the jet so bad I... That's all. That's the whole trouble, sir. Oh, I see. You... Look, you know why you didn't get the assignment? I suppose it was those doggone things. Yes, that's right. Somewhere along the line, they must have showed that you wouldn't be a very good mechanic. Maybe you just don't have that kind of ability. You ever monkey around with cars when you're back home? No, I guess I was always too busy. I used to work in the store after school, help out my dad and that oh, stuff. Oh, sure, I know. I did the same thing myself. That might be why I'm a T.I. instead of a wrench jockey. But I would have learned. That's what the course is for, isn't it? To teach you? And I've tried harder than any other guy. Have you got any idea what would be the result if it turned out that you weren't a very good mechanic? After you went all the way through the school? What do you mean? Well, first of all, the Air Force would be out a whole lot of dough. And when the Air Force is out, though, it's your dad, my dad, a lot of other people who pay taxes, and that includes you and me. We're out the dough. Yeah, but when wait, a fellow... Wait, wait, please. Now, that's just the first thing. Now, second thing, and this is really important. Suppose you did get assigned to jet engine maintenance, and suppose you made a mistake. You know that one mistake you made there could wind up costing somebody's life. Now, how would you feel about it? I never thought of it. Of course, I feel terrible. That's right. And the next thing, how would you rather be a first-class weatherman than a second-class mechanic? Well, well, that's a silly question, isn't it? All right, I'll ask another. You ever stop to think just how important a forecaster is to the Air Force? Well, I know you have to know about the weather, I guess, but... Look at it this way. What's the first thing, the first thing a pilot does before taking off? And then he checks the weather, and then he... Gee, what's that? I guess he can't take off without knowing about the weather, can you're he? You're darn right he can. And when you're telling him what it is, you can bet your bottom dollar he'll be listening. And he'll be listening because he's got confidence in what you say. Yeah. They sure wouldn't pick any dopes to serve in the air weather service, you would they? bet they wouldn't. Well, what do you think? Well, I guess I've got a real job. And, well, thanks, sir. Thanks for telling me. Hey, Jack. Hey, Pete. I thought I'd find you in here. Hey, what's up? From your expression, I guess you found out they gave you the wrong assignment by mistake. Oh, heck no. I've got the right assignment. Listen, you guys. Do you know what the first thing a pilot does before he can take off? Aren't you ever going to get enough shine on those size 12? <laughs> yeah, I guess we're about done now. What happened to Pete? Yeah, that is funny. He said to come to the captain's office, and he hasn't come back yet. Well, Jack, you don't suppose there's something wrong at home? Oh, gee, I hope not. Especially when we were always telling him that everything was all right. No news is good news, that stuff. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, Pete, what happened to you? Yeah, what did happen? <laughs> you look like you swallowed the whole darn chicken. Gee, you just can't imagine. My dad, my mom, and my girl, Peggy. You know, the one I talked about, they were all there. Gee. All where? In the captain's office. What? Where else? Where else, he says. See, I was never so surprised in my life. Look, I guess I'm a little thick, but um, what brought this all about, anyhow? Oh, gee, I don't know. Somehow the chaplain found out about... Hey, it wasn't you guys, was it? Oh, sure wasn't. When you said you didn't want us to say anything, we didn't. I didn't think so. Well, I don't know. Anyhow, he found out, so he wrote him, and he told him about how I was so worried, and... 
You know what they said? This I can't imagine. They said they couldn't figure how I'd be interested in all the ordinary things that were happening at home. Oh. Heck, they said, I know all that. Nothing ever changes, they said, and they were busy with harvest. Just like we told you. I know, I know. (laughs) Anyhow, when they found out about it, they came straight up here to make up for it. How about that, huh? Well, from the looks of you, I'd say it was pretty good. (laughs) You can say that again. Well, now it's the 11th week. You get a pretty good feeling. Your flight's marching in formation on their way to class. And you look at them and maybe it's taken a lot out of you, but they look like the best flight you've ever had. Hi, Dan. What's new? Hi, Jake. Nothing much. Nice looking flight you got there. Yes, sir. Nice flight. It's a lot of responsibility, sure. But then along comes the day like that and another T.I. tells you, nice looking flight. When he could just as easily say, what a herd. It just about beats anything. If you're an ex-serviceman experienced in a critical skill needed to keep America's air defense strong, well, then you're in luck. The Career Incentive Act opens up new opportunities in the Air Force to veterans of all the armed forces. If you possess one of the skills the Air Force needs, you may qualify for the United States Air Force and in a grade that'll be a real pleasant surprise. Right now, the Air Force needs men skilled in many important fields. So put your service earned experience to work to your best advantage as a member of the Air Force team. Make the credit you've earned toward a comfortable retirement pay off. For complete details, you write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter. Ask for the special prior serviceman's folder. See what a return to the service as an airman can mean to you. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force, and this is Dick Herbert speaking, inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail.